So first of all, what is it? What are we talking about when we say Jesus will return? Well, we're talking about him coming back to the earth in glory and in majesty and to rule and to reign when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. It is a vindication, if you like, of the triumph that he achieved upon the cross, the resurrection and his ascension, when he was exalted above everything. But the world needs to see that exaltation and to see him ruling in all of his glory and power. When Jesus came to earth, he announced the coming of the long-awaited kingdom of God. And in his ministry, we see him time and time again, routing the forces of darkness, casting out demons, healing the sick, announcing good news to the poor and to the oppressed. By dying, he deals with the age-old problem of sin and our separation from God. And by rising again, he starts that incredible process of God renewing his creation, making all things new. But when we look around us, we still see uh, the enemy at work. We still see broken relationships. We still see conflict. We still see hopelessness. We still see disease. We still see poverty. But these things will not go on forever. These things will end because Jesus is coming back. And the New Testament picture is of an emperor having won a great victory re-entering his capital city and everyone coming out to meet him. His return will be personal, it will be visible, it will be glorious. It's the ultimate triumph of the Lamb over all his enemies. When he came the first time, it was in a lowly, humble way, not visible to the world. Some people, as we celebrated last month at Christmas, they heard the news, they saw the signs, but it was a silent, stealthy introduction to this world. And what Jesus promised is that when he came again, it would be different. He would be coming in majesty, coming in power, and every eye would see him. Why is the return of Jesus important? It's the culmination of all of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our prayers. And in fact, not just ours, but the people of God throughout the centuries, from, from Genesis onwards. Great revivals, great moves of God have given us a foretaste of when the kingdom of God comes in a mighty way. But that just a foretaste this will be the banquet and it won't have an end. Secondly, it's when we receive our full adoption as children of God, our full adoption. We have a, a, a down payment in the Holy Spirit now and we see wonderful things in this age. But when our full inheritance comes and we receive our deathless, ageless, resurrection bodies, we begin a new phase of our eternal adventure with God. If that's not important, I'm really not sure what is. It's important because it's the fulfillment of the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I find that has been an increasingly important thing to pray. With the chaos, with the injustice, with the fear, with the pandemic, with the uncertainty politically, and in so many areas, one of my prayers has been, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the second coming is important because Jesus is heralding in the kingdom. It's Jesus making the kingdoms of this world the kingdoms of our God. It's Jesus bringing the shalom, the peace, the justice, the righteousness and the eternity of God into our 
here and now. We often talk about the now and the not yet. And what I see is that the importance of the second coming is that the now and the not yet will marry. And all those promises and, and predictions from the Old Testament prophets, from the New Testament, will be fulfilled when Jesus comes again. And every eye shall see him. And John says that we shall see him and we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It'll be the final transformation of a new creation. And he comes to bring final judgment to those who have rejected him. But he also comes to bring reward to those who have been faithful and faithful to him, receiving him as their Lord as well as their Saviour. And Jesus will be seen to be the conqueror that he already is by this world and he will rule and reign throughout the whole of eternity as a result. But how does that affect the way that I live? At one level, if I'm doing anything now that I shouldn't do or wouldn't do if I knew Jesus was coming again, I shouldn't be doing it. And so at one level, we probably shouldn't be doing much differently than what we should be doing now. And I do hope we don't become like some churches that I heard of in the States. A couple of years ago, one of these big mega preachers was predicting the date of the second coming and you know he got it down to the day and the month and thousands of people believed him and it didn't happen. What was discovered afterwards though was that many Christians who would believed this that Jesus was coming on a certain date maxed out their credit cards because they thought they wouldn't have to pay it. Uh, we don't live like that. We live as people who are believing for and hoping for and that's a positive hope and trusting for God's kingdom to come on earth. And I need to be living my life like that. And whether it happens next week or after my life, I don't want to change the way that I live out of fear of the second coming. I want to live as though he's coming. And I want my prayer to be, even so, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Well, it should affect us to live in response to the Lord Jesus. Jesus told an amazing parable about the wise and the foolish virgins. They were both waiting for the return of the bridegroom. But they fell asleep, and as they awoke when the bridegroom came, the wise trimmed their lamps and filled them with oil. The foolish ones hadn't taken a reserve of oil with them. They trimmed their lamps, but they couldn't fill them with oil. And the important point of Jesus' story is that we need a constant inflow and outflow of the Holy Spirit to show his likeness to the earth, to demonstrate that the kingdom of God is here but not yet. It is here but we don't see the final consummation of all of it. And so we want to be truly those that are waiting for his return well, the clear message of the New Testament from Jesus and from the writers of the New Testament is be ready. Be ready. In at least two ways. First of all, let it alter your perspective on everything. Don't be overwhelmed when you look around and read the news and you see all these terrible things happening and organisations that are trying to take over the world or... <sighs> any of that. Yes, it's happening, but it's only part of the picture because Jesus is coming soon. 
Jesus is returning. His victory is assured. Don't ever think that you're praying and you're working and you're ministering and all the other things you do is unimportant. It's not going nowhere because Jesus is coming again. He's coming soon with your reward. Secondly, we need to be ready by doing what we are called to do, making sure we're doing what God has asked us to do. Don't be distracted, don't be put off course by the cares and the worries of this world. Be ready. 